Oh, hey, I'm Coco, and welcome to our talk show, Single and Too Tired to Mingle. We'll be talking about relationships with ourselves, our exes, our kids, and other important beings. So stay tuned. Luca, welcome to Tuesday Talks. Hello, welcome. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you for invitation. You're very welcome. And the reason that we invited you here is this year is an Olympic year. It's going to be held in Paris from the 26th of July to the 11th of August. And as an Olympic medalist, we wanted to have a chat with, uh, with you to see what's up with these Olympic Games. <laughs> I was wondering what's the date of Olympics, so now I know that it's no, 26th July of to, July to yeah. 11th of August. Yeah. Are you going? Oh, no, no, no. No? You've no. had enough? I finished like years ago. <laughs> so, yeah. I mean, I didn't mean as a competitor, I meant just to visit. Uh, probably not. Okay. Probably not. Uh, we did have some arrangements for Tokyo Olympics. Unfortunately, COVID made big mess of that so uh but yeah we didn't do any other arrangements with the national olympic committee of slovenia so it's yeah like, i was gonna say yeah. so lukas pick you're slovenian the country has just two million people but we seem to be producing world-class athletes so we have cycling we have running we have skiing we have swimming and of course we have elite rowing of uh, which you competed in for many, many years with your partner. So it was a double, was it double skull? Is that double skulls, yeah, yeah. Amazing. And so you competed in five Olympic Games. Yeah. You had managed to gain three medals. You decided you want them all different color <laughs> to have in your collection. So in 2000, in Sydney, you won first place. In 2004, it was Athens. So that was silver. In 2006, you guys, so with your partner, Istok Chop, you were um, named as the crew of the year from the World Rowing Association. In 2008, Beijing, <laughs> there was a little bit of a drop, which was sixth place. I mean, drop, it's Olympic Games. And 2012 in London, where you won your last Olympic medal, which was um, bronze. And subsequently, you stopped competing after that. Uh, not me. Not me immediately, but my rowing partner, yeah. I think that was his last season, yeah. But I was I was trying to row for the next two years. Okay. So, yeah. so what, in singles or still double? Uh, no, no, no. Uh, I mean, I was always fond of single. Because you're rowing a little bit. So I was always we... fond of single. I was always fond of uh, team. Okay. I think... That I kind of like uh, crew mentality, okay. crew vibe, uh, you know. But if you want to be good in a sport, whichever sport you're doing, I think you want to be good as individual mm. because uh, your quality does bring you more calmness in your state of mind because other factors which are like you know coaches federations and stuff like that cannot mess with your plan so if you're the best mm. nobody can really yeah. uh do something that they cannot go against you which is happening quite a lot in in sport in politics in all kind of fields yeah but if you're the best it's harder to fight against that it's similar to tennis actually which i play so if you're it's good sport. at singles yeah it's sport. they will choose you for doubles yeah, prior yeah to just yeah. doubles players so interesting yeah. so why don't we start off um at your roots so where you began or how you began being an elite sportsman so both of your parents were professional sports people no none of them neither of them they were both of them were uh athletes right okay uh but if you're going back to history of yugoslavia mm -hmm. uh physical education was fairly strong at that time sure. and i think this is something that uh it's quite cherishable you know it's quite yeah, nice and uh so my father he was competing at handball Okay. And he was good middle distance runner and he was running marathons. And uh, my mom, she was like 
doing javelin throwing, uh, uh, discus throwing, sorry. Okay. And then later on uh, volleyball. Okay. So I was following this. So first sport for me was actually volleyball. Okay. And uh, it's just sport was subject was thing at home. You know, it's something, I guess, if your parents are architects or uh, lawyers, this is kind of subjects yeah. at your home. So, uh, yeah, that's what I'm saying, subject. Yeah. And then you're just getting adapted to it. So, yeah. Okay. And so where did your passion come from for rowing specifically? Because you did other sports before. Uh, and did you always know you're going to be an elite athlete or did that just happen along the way? I mean... Do you know, you don't know? I think it's more like, you know, as I said, it's more like uh, home culture. Right. You know, it's like uh, sport was always big, big part of our environment. Okay. Our, I'm saying because you're Slovenian as well. <laughs> and it's like, you know, in school, <laughs> in school uh, physical the education was always easy. like fairly, you know, you had like a uh, few times a week you know with the classes yeah. so it's like and uh you're we were doing everything so it's like yeah, it's track and field like uh team games mm -hmm. uh gymnastics all kind of things so basic was there already so and Are then inspired by a certain event um uh, my to be honest my parents were inspired okay. by barcelona olympics okay. 92 yeah. when uh Slovenian rowers got the first Olympics for Olympic medal for independent Slovenia. Mm -hmm. And that was kind of they ask me if I would be interested to oh, start uh, rowing. So it came more from their side. So I was like, eh, I kind of knew about it. So I was kind of annoyed with them because they were watching these Barcelona Olympics right. so rigorously, you know, right. like, oh, yeah. and I was just, I was, oh, fuck. I just went to my room. I was listening <laughs> to the radio. <laughs> yeah. But yeah. So. Okay. So good. Um, so, okay. You have, apart from the three Olympic medals, you have many accolades to your name and many world champions and so forth. But talk us through two specifically. So at age 17, you became a world champion. And then at age 21, you won your first Olympic medal. So talk us through a little bit what happens or what you feel at the beginning of the race, kind of middle at the end. Obviously, when you're good, your whole country is thinking that you have to always be. I mean, you know, first. I'm going to I'm going to go slightly. It's going to be easier for everyone who's listening sure. and watching this. Mm -hmm. um, race so rowing race or tennis match or basketball or if you have a podcast so it's like you're getting ready for this so it's like and then when things come so you know because probably you're no nervous more than me mm. today because <laughs> you know you're dealing with this it's your project so it's like and you want this to go good without any problems and to get the best out of it. So it's a very similar feeling. So it's like uh, your expectations are high and then depends on the person how you're dealing with this, how you're building this up, who's around you. And, you know, so uh, race is a race. So as a athlete, as a kid, teenager, slowly you're growing up then it's going through years and then it's just becoming your kind of job right. and it doesn't get any easier mm. yeah so you, you know your next Guess. podcast yeah. is going to be it's going to be the same <laughs> same true? pressure so <laughs> it's like right. yeah yeah it's just because everyone's like oh it's your fourth olympics so it's going to be easy no yeah, no no, no. It's it's true. actually it's getting event, yeah. it's getting even more complicated because mm. you know what can go wrong right and you know you're coming now you have you're... experience all of a sudden right? of course you do have experience but then you're aware of things that can go wrong as yeah. well i mean so that's what like, i mean now yeah. you have experience of things yeah. that can go right but also yeah. wrong so yeah. okay interesting and so were you always like really nervous before or was there ever a time when you were just like okay let's just do this uh i think I become more nervous through the years, right. in a way. Right. So if I'd compare it, uh, I don't know, uh, 2000, 
it's hard to compare, to be honest, you know. I was probably always nervous, but I definitely, I become aware, I don't know, maybe around Athens and stuff, you know, I start asking myself, you know, start, why am I doing this? <laughs> <laughs> uh, it's, you know, it's this, uh, it's this battle with yourself because you're like you know you're trying to convince that every everything is going to be all right you've mm -hmm. done a good job at training but it's always this like bad positive and negative mm -hmm. side yeah, something can happen everything's going to be all right you know so it's like you're like battling with this and it's like you know i think that's one of the reasons that i stop at the end you know is that it's your not so much or does everyone go through that uh, I think we're different, you know, it's like uh, we, we, we deal with things differently, mm -hmm. you know, I mean, you know, if we have the same problem, yeah, you're going to sure. approach differently than me. So it's like, which is normal and which and okay, it's supposed to be. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But one of the other things is like we, I never, I did never work with, uh, psychologist before oh, wow. okay. so I did grow up in a way of if you want to deal with a problem you should deal it by yourself on your own wow. and I think that it's you know at certain extent I still believe because when you're at the starting blocks of Olympic game or or world championships mm. so it's you potentially your rowing partner mm. and nobody else is around so hey hey man uh, are we gonna be fine you know so it's uh you need to be strong you need to believe in yourself yeah. but of course external help can help you it to understand this that you can do it so it's uh it's kind of this but i grow up without this and i, I think, think every that, slovenian grew up like that yeah you've got to manage it yourself probably yeah yeah because we're coming <laughs> This is our environment, fuck it, you know. Yeah. So you have a problem, you deal with it. Die hard. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> My question is also, okay, fine, I get that. Um, with your rowing partner, you guys weren't friends out, outside of the sport. Do you think it would have helped if you guys got along personally as well? Would it made it a little bit easier or was it just like every man for himself? I mean... You're saying that we are not friends. This is like very uh, general I'm not observation. Not, but you, you like, can you know, me. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I think it's hard to say not being friend. You yeah. know, it's like uh, and being friend or whatever. But would so you it's hang like, out together? Uh, but out of the you know, example. it's so Eastok. He's seven years older than me. This is one of the big elements that we need to understand in yeah. you know when we're watching back now so it's like i'm we started so in sydney i was 21 mm. so he was 28 right. he already have olympic already medal he already have olympic medal he was world champion so it's like it's slightly different dynamic of of how you develop as a person as an athlete and everything and it's definitely uh I think we are good, but then it's like, you know, you're floating around. It's like maybe, you know, Eastok and me, we are not the ones that we are hanging around all the time, sometimes, you know. And uh, I think if we wouldn't have that kind of connection, yeah, we wouldn't be able to be yeah, such a good friends now, which we are okay. afterwards. But I do agree that maybe, you know, quite often was referred as, oh, Luca and Isto cannot really cope together. Right. Cope, like, yeah. uh, but I think it was more like uh, um, overtaking this thing, you know, was not real. We are good, but um, it's still, I think that if you want to achieve something, it's not about, it's about understanding. It's not about the friendship, mm. you know. I did have a chance to be around situations that people were preparing to sacrifice result for a friendship mm -hmm. and you're there for a result. So it's like sure. I said at one point, I said, you know, if I would, if there would be a chance that I would go for a double skull mm -hmm. and there would be like three people, me, my brother and someone else. And we will have a seat race, which means that you're trying to find 
bridge double works right. best of yeah. these three <laughs> people. Yeah. Yeah. And, uh, you know, I would be prepared. So if I would be better with someone else mm. or if my brother would be better with someone else, I wouldn't have a problem if yeah. he would go with this or I would go with someone who's yeah. who I'm better with because at the end of the day, we're still brothers yeah. and we're still friends. So it's like, you know, and you're training for this particular yeah, exactly. element, which is like final of Olympic Games and World Championships. So it's like, I think it's friendship doesn't really have place yeah. in the professional um, sphere. Yeah, I, I mean, you need to be respectful, um, acknowledgeable and stuff, but you know, we don't need to. <laughs> yeah, the result. Or yeah, yeah. So, yeah. So, yeah. So, to, um, going back to the year 2000, it was the first gold medal, um, Olympic gold medal for Slovenia. So, it was you and Istok Chop. And then a couple of hours also, our shooter, uh, the Beots. And Slovenia named that day, so the 23rd of September, as the day of national sport in Slovenia. So, how does that feel to have a, a national day after your own achievements? <laughs> or are you completely neutral to that? It's like whatever. <laughs> That's I mean, their own problem. <laughs> I mean, they're like they're they're two answers, yeah. Okay. Exactly. The one is like, oh yeah, I feel flattered, and it's like you know, and the other one is like, I don't care. Yeah. And it's like to be honest, uh, I think I don't fucking care. You know, it's mm. it's like it is. It's good for sport. It's good for, uh, I think people should be aware that this is good, but this is not the only thing in life. You know, sport is. What, you mean your achievements? Or? No, but just like in general, you know, because it's like we open the newspaper and it's like sport da, 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 and it's like there's science, there's culture. So yeah. it's like everything. So it's if you're shit at sport and you're good at something else, great. You know, yeah. it's like sport is just sport. Yeah. And then it's like literature, you know, everything else. So it's like, you know, I think it's as long as you feel comfortable and you feel satisfied what you're doing and you, you know, that's it, whatever you're doing, you know, I think it's like, uh, I think that's the important thing. And uh, yeah, I just think that sometimes uh, sport is very very cherished i think more than something else you know don't get me wrong maybe because i'm an athlete and i'm that's what you say i'm more. an ex-athlete i'm slightly more uh critical about that but yeah i think that sport is sometimes overrated <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. i mean i think it's is it overrated or is it just because you see sport more because you're an ex-sportsman I was like, I'm, I'm guessing someone from culture would think, oh, there's a lot of culture going on. I mean, you know, that's what I'm saying, you know, maybe just because I'm an athlete, yeah. ex-athlete. Yeah, yeah. And I'm like, you know, I just think that it's like, you know, there's so much more. Yeah. And but of course, when you're doing it, that's the that's the thing. That's yeah. the only thing that you're focused into it. So it's like, you know, okay. it's very hard to kind of go around so yeah yeah but uh yeah it's you know i mean if you check athletes are the most paid that is true. people you know so it's kind of it's kind of this amazing thing do do we as an athlete yeah do we really do such amazing things to be so cherished as like people are enjoying like oh yeah supporting and it's like you know it's it's this moment of support what about, I don't know, culture? I don't know, books. Uh, what about what about science? Science, you know, when they develop something. And it's like, you know, and nobody's around like, oh, yeah. You well, know, the pharma so. companies are because the pharma companies then take oh, all yeah. the discoveries. No, no, right? but it's I, a different I'm, I'm talking more about like yeah. general knowledge about about things that are happening around us. Sure, so, I agree. Yeah. So, it's so, very like, you know, Roman style yeah? yeah it's entertainment yeah. yeah did you feel that in your in your career that you for were us, to entertain no of course it's not for okay. for athlete it's not because you're there you know you're shitting your you're, pants <laughs> you're shitting your pants at the start blocks so it's kind of you know it's not really entertaining for you it is for the know. people who are on the sofa right expecting you to win <laughs> i mean so yeah 
Okay. Um, so I talk of, do you guys as ex Olympians or professional sports people, do you get like a life stipend or anything like that? Or is it once you're done, you're done? Like no one finances you for everything that you've done for the country, I guess. Depends on the country. Okay. I think it's, um, uh, depends where you're coming from. And then I guess depends from which sport you are, you know, so it's different factors right. are there. So it's like, I think it's very similar to business, you know, in better business you are, uh, better opportunities you have or whatever, you know, better pension plan you have or whatever. <laughs> so it's like, I think it's, um, yeah, you know, if you're rowing is definitely not one of the most, uh, uh, how would I say, uh, sport would bring a lot of uh, financial benefits, okay. you know, uh, which, you know, I think it's kind of, it is how it is. Mm -hmm. It's about federations, uh, uh, how they manage to marketing that and stuff. And I get it's definitely one plus in this because less money you have, less problems you're going to have as well, you know, okay. problems I'm saying about potential, you know, doping. Yeah. So if I don't earn millions, yeah. then it's much easier that I'm not going to be willing to, right. to go into something which is potentially harm for my body or whatever. So it's like, you know, okay. So the more money, the more, yeah, I mean, you know, right? I mean, you know, so it's like this is I think it's very capitalistic yeah. mindset. More I get, more I'm willing to sacrifice. Sure. So it's like, you know. And it's interesting that this year is the first time that Olympians are going to get paid for their results. I think it's about track and field athletics. Like it's just athletics? I think it's uh yeah, uh what's uh president of athletic federation they're gonna get uh, money for the mm -hmm. medals but it's just about athletics it's not oh, yeah. rowing is not there it's it's not judo <laughs> is not there swimming is not there so but that's what i'm saying so you know you it's feel like, about that? do you think it should be you should also get i mean you know it's like since i stopped in 212 was my last time that i was at the olympics uh, I think Olympic Olympic Games are amazing thing. They're like festival of sport. Right. Yeah. But we need to understand something that uh, the least important element in that festival, they're athletes, which are supposed to be the most important okay. thing. Why is that? So it's like, why is that? Because it's like, if you don't have athletes, you don't have anything. Oh, correct, yeah. I understand. But yeah. why are the athletes not the main event? No, they are the main event, but they're the least important thing. Because if you're important, you get big benefits, but you don't. Everyone else around, it's like, you know, if it, I think it's Olympic Games are big, big business correct. project. But that's and I think it's deal. definitely <laughs> athletes are purely like, you know, it's like we go back to the Roman times, yeah. gladiators. It's like, you know, survive or die. That's it. And they've still if, kept that mentality. <laughs> if you survive, be happy. You know, that that's it. That That's yours. <laughs> oh, wow. Okay. <laughs> uh, I mean, you know, uh, yeah, I, I think it's, you know, in a way, how much they can... Uh, reward yeah. athletes probably more than than they yeah. do but you know it's like i'm i don't want to sound bitter because i'm not there but yeah. i think it should be care about athletes more you know yeah. more in a way okay. they deserve more and i'm not saying that whoever gets anything now and it's more than me i would be happy you know if i'm not there I'm still happy because someone else sure. has better conditions than me. So it's like that. I just it. think the Olympics generate so much money that I think, you know, the people who actually do the Olympics should probably get some compensation as well. So, I mean, you know, it's like it's uh, it's business. Yeah. So you sign the contract that you can compete to the Olympics, okay. which is which means that a few days before the Olympics or I don't know, is it 10 days? Uh, sponsors of National Olympic Committee can use you 
use your picture or whatever, mm-hmm. you know. So, and then I think it's about two weeks afterwards as well. Okay. And if you have your own personal sponsor yeah. at that time, and it's not part of the Olympic movement family, right? They cannot use anything that you are, you know. So it's it's quite it's quite challenging for an athlete, which is sometimes hard to get anyway. Mm. And then this is another obstacle. Mm. So it's like it's you know that's what I'm saying. It's very like you know uh, as much as they're saying, oh, we're here for athletes, you know. Yeah, okay. <laughs> I mean, uh, I mean, I have my opinion, and if someone else thinks, you know, I think it's it's supposed to be about sport and athletes mm. you know it's not about but you know no. it's not about people around yeah. it is because yeah. without people around you cannot grow you cannot become who you it's are synergy, yeah? right? it's synergy like it's it's together. the same like in a company you know yeah. people are building company you got employed and then you become better and better. Da, da, da. So it's like, uh, it's kind of understanding of relationship. Yeah. Mm. You know, you're never going to get the biggest piece of the cake, mm. you know, and then it's about indoctrination. Yeah. So you need to wash your brain a little bit and then you can become part of the family, I guess. <laughs> kind of like companies as well. Yeah, it's true. Yeah, I see. So talking about relationships, um, as an elite athlete, I'm guessing that your calendar is full and it's um, packed with things that you need to do to achieve certain results. Plus, do you need to be maybe like a bit egocentrical to get where, you know, the results that you want to get? And if so, how does that impact your personal life and your personal relationships? Uh, I think, I mean, it's again, purely my my what I can say it's purely from my mm. side of what I was doing so and I think it's I mean it's egocentrical but then it's not you know if you're single it's different mm. if you're with someone if you're in a relationship you're different than my friends and my acquaintances they say oh yeah having a kid changed a lot so it's kind of this additional element you know, it's kind of so. Uh, I don't know. It's all about. Uh, it's. I think it's like everything else. You know, you have a kind of plan what you're gonna do. Mm-hmm. Some people have plan for four years. Some people have a plan for a year. So it's like depends on the person. You know. Okay. So. Okay. <laughs> and. Okay, in Slovenia, you're still an A-list celebrity, we can quite easily say, and even back in the day, uh, even more so. How do you deal with trust when you meet new people or when people come to you, whether it's, you know, people coming to you for yourself, for Luca, or is it just people that can potentially benefit from you? Uh, I think that um, I never had a problem with that, you know. Okay. It's like... I was told that you should mingle because it's going to give you an option to create new connections and create opportunities. Uh, I was trying to do that. And then after a while, when people are like approaching me and promising me certain things, you know, uh, I'm honest enough to myself and I, I'm, (laughs) I'm alternative enough that I said, Hey guys, you know, you don't need to prom- promise me anything mm-hmm. to potentially hang out with me. Right, so okay. if you're not going to do what you promised, then you're just a dig because they were guys. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Mostly. So, uh, and I told them that they're, they're dicks. And actually that kind of just make my life much easier because I just didn't want to deal with people who are promising you something. Mm-hmm. And, uh, you know, I don't have problem to, you know, I didn't have problem to, say yeah to your interview it's like Mm -hmm. it's something that you want to do it's like i'm like i'm here so it doesn't hurt me so it's like and uh you know i think it's 
I don't see that always someone wants to take something from you. Mm. I think I'm more annoyed that someone promised something right. and don't deliver. I'm like, okay, you know, it's this a waste is of your time. Basically. Yeah, it's it's a little bit, you know, just don't say anything yeah. because you don't need to do that. You know, we're all right. You know, it's like we're humans, and I like socializing. I like good company. And that's it. Okay, so the day that you stopped or decided that you weren't going to train anymore or be an athlete, um, did it come to like a natural end and it was quite easy for you to do that or was it distressful for you to finish your career? Uh, no, actually, I was. it's going for a while, at least with me. Mm -hmm. It went for a while. So it's like, you know, what, I'm gonna, what am I going to do when I'm going to, stop rowing yeah what is going to be this what's going to be afterwards you know it's like and then it's like I'm you're sure thinking it's tempting, right or um i don't know it's i think it's um uh, what we build around us what's our mental state is like we talk with people yeah mm -hmm. and most of the time it's not like what expect we project expectations from someone else on us okay. it's not like that we project what we would want or expect from ourselves so it's a little bit like uh i think it's um at least for me what do you mean by that growing growing in environment is like you know being surrounded is like just uh very nice community and everything but it's it's kind of you know you're and maybe me, I'm slightly more like a, a helper, you know, okay. person who helps. So, and helper means like uh, that you're adjusting yourself. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, you know, to that, others. Yeah, to others. Because, you know, if you're a helper, it means that whatever you do, you think that you're helping. Right. Yeah? Okay. It doesn't matter. Yeah. So it's like, and uh, at that point, I think it's a little bit, you're thinking what I'm going to do with the uh, equation which is like because of someone else mm. it's not what i'm gonna do because of myself mm. and uh, so we moved to london and that year here actually i was like i didn't announce that i'm gonna stop rowing yet right. but being here every week give me more and more clearance you know more and more this exact feeling, you know, I was like, oh yeah, I'm enjoying being away from that. You know, I didn't miss it. I I don't miss it. Yeah. You know, it's like, um, and I think I was one of the lucky ones because I didn't stop uh, my sport career because of the injury right. or, you know, something. I think that if you're an unfortunate uh, uh, person who's who's forced to stop something, yeah. it's much different, it's much harder. But uh, yeah, I was this lucky one who kind of came into the, you know, acknowledgement, okay, that's it, yeah. So I just, you know, I just don't want to do it anymore. Okay. So that's I've it. heard that from like a professional tennis player from Slovenia. She said one day she's like, I don't want to train anymore, end of, and no one could convince her to go back to train. For me, it was not just like one day, but was like, you know, that's I was good. away and it was kind of not being there. I was like, okay, it was not just from, today till tomorrow right, okay. so it was like i have time which was months which gave me like you know i was like is this really and i was like yeah yeah i was just like mm. it's cool mm -hmm. you know it's like and it's you haven't regretted it's it nice please? no and you know i mean you're a crossfit trainer now so you've kept sporty oh yeah i'm, I'm <laughs> fairly close what i was doing but yeah. you know i'm enjoying this much more when i started doing crossfit mm. you know it was interesting because... But uh, you're ranked as well, so you're still competing. <laughs> at CrossFit? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I'm... <laughs> you still like the drive. I'm, you still like oh, the pressure. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, oh, yeah. I mean, but, you know, it's uh, one of the interesting things. Yeah. Uh, so I stopped rowing. Yeah. I was in the gym. And then our gym convert to CrossFit. Right. Yeah? Okay. And I was like, okay, fuck. CrossFit, you know, I didn't know anything about right. CrossFit. Yeah. I mean, I knew something about it, but I was like, okay, this is like, it's a tribal thing. I'm coming from tribal thing, which is rowing. And I was like, oh, fuck, do I want to go in another tribal thing, right. which is CrossFit? And I was like, oh, you know, 
And then, anyway, I've done qualifications. I started training with the amazing team, which is like uh, now one more rep uh, here in uh, East London. Mm -hmm. uh, Brazilian guys, so uh, they taught me a lot about CrossFit. And I started enjoying it. I saw CrossFit, you know, it's, I was start enjoying it as I was enjoying my rowing at the beginning. Wow. Yeah, so it was really, uh, you know, but when I started rowing, I was 13, yeah. So okay. when I started doing CrossFit, I was like 40, <laughs> good. 41, you know. So, but it's good. Yeah. Oh, it yeah. Keeps but you young and it keeps you alive. That's what I'm saying. You know, it's mm -hmm. amazing because I was enjoying this. I got this enjoyment again, yeah. you know. Yeah. Even the Dao shit. Yeah. It's not about yeah. this. It's about you're enjoying it and yeah. people around, you know, and it's... Uh, as much as I did have reservations at the beginning, mm -hmm. I think it's amazing because it's like you can scale everything. Yeah. The other thing is like uh, you you have so many elements mm. which are combining that there's definitely something that you're good at something, yeah. and there's definitely elements that you shit at something. So it's kind of you know shit yeah. shit shit makes you humble. Yeah. And good keeps you there that's it <laughs> <laughs> okay so speaking of that why don't you walk us through what's been your highlight in your career and maybe what's been your worst moment in your career uh, and do you think about rowing like at night before you go to sleep do you kind of replay races in your mind or anything like that or not <laughs> <laughs> you, you're done done I see <laughs> I mean uh, no I don't think you never do that oh. yeah, but okay. I mean I mean you're divorced. Do you think about your ex marriage? No, but I never married him to start with. Let's be let's be precise. I mean, you know, I mean, the point is that your marriage is still your marriage. So it's like my rowing career is yeah. my rowing career, but doesn't mean that you're thinking about this shit all the time. Yeah, so it's like, I hit it all I, the time. I just hit sometimes. I mean, I think we do, but probably when I watch rowing, mm. you know, or you know, it's. It's happening less and less okay. that I would watch or so like be interested. It's like an X, basically. It's been great, but now it's not there. Yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah. you know, it doesn't matter what kind of relationship we had in our life. Yeah. You know, this is like sport, science, X. You know, it's always, we, we're always going to remember things, yeah. you know. And we're always going to remember shit and good things. Yeah. And we're always going to remember good things more than shit things, mm. you know. But in due when, course, <laughs> when, when you stop, in due course, when yeah. you stop this, yeah. you remember shit first yeah, and then it's then going. Yeah. Exactly. So. Uh, uh, so what's been your highest moment in your career? I would Sydney, Sydney. The yeah. Cold, yeah. Sydney. It's just like, you know, for me. Yeah, it was just like. Winning. Everything was perfect, you know, so yeah. for me, it was Sydney was the best and then probably uh, I mean, Atlanta 96 was one of the shit ones. Mm -hmm. We qualified and my expectations, my my expectations were much higher than my than reality, you know, delivery was. Right. So what we've done was like reality, but I was expecting more. So it was kind of OK, it was good uh, school for the future. And probably then Beijing was kind of this kind of yeah, expecting more. But, you know, then uh, not I think it was just kind of a little bit miscalculated uh, season in a way. So, yeah. uh, but I would say that like disappointment wise, I would say probably uh, Sydney and Athens, that there were uh, Sydney different. and Atlanta. Okay. Atlanta, my first Olympics were actually the worst in a way of right. disappointment wise. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Beijing was different in a way. We are still in the final, so we are not that far away. But I think Atlanta was more like this when. You know, when you go there, I was like, what, 17 years old and oh, yeah, fuck you're it, full you know? of yourself. <laughs> not like we're going to get gold, but yeah. yeah, you know, and then it's like you're looking at everyone else and you're there. Oh, fuck. You know? So it's uh, yeah, I think uh, it's quite I was, good to have that experience as well. Yeah, yeah, it was good because I was young yeah. and it's like, you know, so and I think, you know, I have to shout out to my coach because Milo Shiansha was, you know, he was my coach for all my these 23 years and wow. I think it's definitely his um, 
guidance as well that uh, that brought me where I was, where we all are, because you know, Istok is from Bled, Jani, so the four, so most of Slovenian uh, rowers. Uh, we are from, from the beautiful Bled. lake. Uh, uh, it's Bled. amazing. You should, <laughs> if you haven't been there, you should go. I'm not telling I mean, you. <laughs> <laughs> but it is lovely, actually. I always thought it was so lovely. It was quite kitsch. But then my friend, my best friend got married there. And I'm like, actually, it is pretty nice. So I had to admit the photos were spectacular. So I mean, was I'm taking um, some of my English friends there. And, you know, when I moved to to UK, at the beginning, I was like, okay, I'm from Slovenia, so whatever. Yeah, whatever. You know? <laughs> we went there. It's like, wow, what are you doing in London? You know? yeah, and I was so like, true. oh, yeah, it's really amazing. You know? I, know, I start, it's true. I start yeah. appreciating yeah. these things because of everyone else. Yeah. You know, And it's amazing. That's what I'm saying. Quite often we do things and we don't do things mm. because of other people as well. So it's like, you know, I think it's important that we have acknowledgement that good to get good things from people around us, mm. you know, so. Okay. And what would be like a positive takeaway for our viewers and listeners and perhaps, I don't know, up and coming sports people or just from your experience, what's important? What isn't important? Uh, just do what you like. I think, yeah. I mean, you know, it's like, if you're lucky enough, uh, you're going to do something and it's going to be natural. You know, yeah. if you're lucky enough, your parents are there, they see this or whatever. But I think it's, you know, I don't know if we are very fortunate, you know, that you do something and I'm not talking now to people who are 13 years old or 15, yeah. more people who are like 35 plus. If you're fortunate enough that you do something, that you find something mm -hmm. that you feel fulfilled, I think that's amazing. I would like to meet that kind of people, mm -hmm. you know, because uh, I don't have feeling that my uh, achievements ever made me fulfilled, wow. you know. So I think it's uh, it's. Uh, it's something that I was doing that I was good at, right. but doesn't mean that, you know, it, it was like, okay, let's cut this cake. Let's eat it. Let's go forward. You know, it was very, so it's, uh, yeah, maybe that's the reason that it was fairly easy for me to, to mm -hmm. stop as well. So, you know, it was not something that I would long on it for so still searching for your passion in life then. i mean i kind of probably i kind of find it you know it's like more uh enjoying creating something i'm a carpenter so it's like create creating something or coaching people you know so it's more like this thing you know but i think um it's as much as i'm enjoying training people i think that training people who want to be professional yeah athletes for example it's much more challenging. It's like, you know, it's an element that if I tell you to do it, you should do it. Yeah. And you shouldn't cry about it. Yeah. Because if you're going to cry, I mean, you know, what can I do? There's no way to go from there. Now we have so <laughs> many restrictions, but, you know, I would just. So what do you just, prefer? Do you prefer just people who want to train or do you prefer the pros? Uh, or they're just different. I don't know. Uh, the same thing? When you. When you train people who just train, yeah, you adjust your expectations toward that. Right. With uh, professional athletes, yeah, you're not adjusting expectations toward athletes. So they're doing it to you. You do adjust a little bit towards like right. condition of certain certain situation of the training regime at the moment, but you know, it have to be deliverance. So years ago. We were joking with my coach, you know, mm -hmm. and uh, I think I still think that uh, professional sport is like modern slavery. Yeah? Right. You're a guy or you're a person, you're mm -hmm. an athlete who's there to listen and to, to just obey and yeah. do, you know, you know, fuck it. You know, if you don't do it, I don't need you. Mm. It's it's about, you know, sport is very cruel. It's not just sport, everything else. Mm. Yeah, Sport is just, uh, you know, everything is business right. and business is business. And if you don't bring, 
fuck off, go home. I don't need you. So it's like, you know, that, that's the situation about, you know. And if you want to be the best, uh, unfortunately, that's how it is. Just sometimes. have to listen to your coach and... I mean, yeah, but you're willing to do it. And it's like, you know, it's it's about coach, so athlete and a coach relationship as well. You know, it's it's pure trust. Yeah. You know, I mean, I remember when coach was telling me, oh, you can do it. You know, I was like, I was beforehand, I would mm. think, nah, when he's fuck, yeah, I can, you know, it may because okay. you build that kind of relationship and it's like, you know, it, it means so much. It's like, you know, someone is telling you, I think you're trusting this person more than you're trusting your parents in a yeah, way. For sure. Because you're with this person like, I don't know, every day. I mean, you're with your parents every day, but it's different, it's different thing. You know, yeah. they're, this I person. Think you have to give in to them almost. And this person is asking you every time, all the time, mm. to perform to do something yeah and you're doing it and you're like you know and if you're bad you're told that you're bad right. but if you're good you're told that you're good so it's kind of you know. and i think it's i was lucky enough that i was in rowing which is like a uh, time sport yeah if you're in gymnastics i think it's element of judges because it's which aesthetic, is, right it's personal and someone else is judging you sure. you know i'm running from i'm rowing from zero to two thousand so it's like it's hard to say oh he was not rowing <laughs> nice so it's like, you know but you know it's time mm. so it's like and uh this is what i like crossfit as well you know it's like it's this it's community and it's everything it's kind of understanding and yeah so are you staying in crossfit or what ambitions do you have for the future if you know I'm staying in CrossFit. I'm <laughs> staying in <just> CrossFit. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I mean, you know, I'm trying to improve myself. Mm. Uh, I think it's uh, it's definitely. Do you want to be first in the world in CrossFit? What I want doesn't mean that. That's I... fine. Yeah, but I'm just asking you. <laughs> oh, do you want uh, whatever happens? I, happens. I, we I don't know, right? Be, but you know, yeah. then it's acknowledgement <laughs> how good or bad you are. Mm. You know, so it's like uh, I wouldn't mind, but it's like you know. When you're there and you know how much it takes, yeah, it's the same thing. I was playing with the uh, thought for a while. Uh, oh, maybe you know, going, I think it was maybe for Rio, yeah. Mm. It's oh, oh, no, I think it was in Rio, and I was thinking, oh, maybe you know, Tokyo would be something, you know, coming back and whatever, you know. And I was thinking, okay, so you know, if you start training, like I'm talking about rowing, uh, start training, and it's like then, you know year or two or whatever and then it's like you know compete and it's like and then potentially get sponsors and change mm. your life because you have to commit again you know? yeah and then one option is like okay you have to train you have to commit you need to get someone who's going to be willing to support your financial yeah. sponsors and then okay you go there and then there's potential option you do or you fail mm. so first you need to qualify yeah and then is the Olympic Games yeah. uh, story. So it's like, you know, so it's kind of, are you willing to sacrifice all that again? And I was like, no, nah, fuck that. I've <laughs> been there, done that. I mean, it's not just, you know, it's just like, you know, I'm like, no, I, you know, it's just too much. But it's I, good. I think it's good. because I, I think, think it's amazing. You your it's amazing you know, what there. people, you know, how much people are doing. And, I never really saw what I've done in sport that was uh, sacrifice, right. you know, that I missed anything or whatever, you know, okay, I don't see good. it that way, but okay. going back into the game, I would see it as a sacrifice, you know, then I'm more like, I don't, I'm not sure if I'm, if I would be willing to do it. I mean, you know, money is one of the most important thing in our life. Give me a lot of money, I would try. <laughs> <laughs> I was gonna say you seem at peace with it, but maybe maybe oh, no, there's no, a problem. No, no. But don't don't get me wrong. You know, it's like you know. Of course, if, if you say okay, let's try, it's still yours. <laughs> <laughs> We're not gonna give you money, Luca, but um, the Tuesday talks will give you your own personal gold medal. Oh. It might not be as heavy, but it's probably sweet. <laughs> I mean, it's big as London one. There you go. <laughs> Thank you so much for being my guest, Luca. <laughs> and the only one who's won a medal here. <laughs> really? Yeah. No, it's feel, just for you. No, I feel bad. <laughs> Why? For everyone else. <laughs> oh, no. They got other stuff. <laughs> Thanks so much for your time, Luca. <laughs> Thank you.